Godzilla fans, thank you. Y'all pushed my channel into the stratosphere and I can't thank you enough for it, but I can celebrate a bit. So here's all my Godzilla related shorts. It looks like we're getting another Godzilla movie, but not this Godzilla though. This one will be from the Japanese studio Toho, which created and owns the big G. We know it's coming out this fall and we got this teaser image, but that's all we got right now. Apparently we're getting a proper announcement on July 11th, which is tomorrow. So consider the hype train rolling, baby. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong. It features a lot of the same cast and crew as that movie, including director Adam Wingard, which I consider a plus. It wrapped filming in Queensland, Australia last year, which, looking at it, I'm just gonna call that a working vacation. The movie's scheduled to be released March 15th, 2024, and honestly, I'm going to the theater to see it. When Godzilla vs. Kong hit the theater, it was... Pretty much the first big movie to hit theaters post, you know. So it holds a special place in my heart for it. And honestly, I loved it so much that if this is anything like that, I think we can. We've got our first look at Monarch Legacy of Monsters. This will be a 10 episode series focused on the Monarch organization from the Monsterverse, featuring Godzilla from the looks of it. Kurt Russell and his son Wyatt will actually be playing the same character in different age brackets. Kind of surprised that hasn't happened before. Apple hasn't yet said when this is going to be hitting Apple TV+, Plus, but given their track record, we're probably going to get a trailer and a release date sooner rather than later. The Monsterverse is looking good, folks. You might be seeing Godzilla X Kong and Godzilla Minus One and being like, wow, Wow, why there's so many Godzillas running around? The answer's pretty simple, but a bit long. Godzilla has always been a Japanese property, and even a cultural ambassador. Production company Toho has been pumping the movies out since 1954, but sometimes they'll let the Americans get a crack at it. There's the Hanna-Barbera cartoon, there's the Snorefest, and now there's the Monsterverse, which is by far the most successful American attempt. But that doesn't stop Toho from making their own Godzilla movies. And there's a lot of them that you definitely haven't seen and probably have never heard of, and honestly, they're worth a watch. So that's why all you gotta say is new Godzilla movie, and I'm excited. This one will be taking place right after the US dropped the suns on Japan, and uh, the Big G has something to say about that. I don't think he speaks English though, it looks like his only language is destruction. There's an ex-spouse joke in there, but that's beneath me. This movie is heading theaters in Japan November 3rd and the US December 1st. And I'ma be the first in line because Godzilla the series, I mean Monarch Legacy of Monsters, has a trailer. And it kind of surprised me. I was bracing myself for a very people-focused show. But it looks like we're getting plenty of monster appearances. Or maybe they just loaded the trailer up with those just to sell the show. Either way, this might be the thing that gets me to subscribe to Apple TV+. Plus. More Godzilla is never a bad thing. Now, Godzilla has many flavors, and this one looks like it's leaning towards a more serious, bleak type of story. Unlike previous entries, this Godzilla looks like it's making landfall right after the atomic bombs dropped on Japan. And he looks pissed. I'm really looking forward to this movie. Call it corny, call it unrealistic, all true, I don't care. Watching giant monsters punch each other is a time-honored tradition that I'll take any day of the week. In this case, it's Godzilla and King Kong throwing hands with Emperor Louis over here. Take your time placing bets, because this apparently ain't hitting theaters until summer 2024. Crazy? Yes. But you know what? Fun facts about Godzilla Minus One. It'll take place between 1945 and 1947, which, to put it mildly, uh, Japan was already in a tough spot before the Big G was running around. The director wants this version of Godzilla to give off a strong horror vibe. Off to a decent start, if you ask me. And finally, it's releasing in Japan, in theaters, November 3rd, which is National Godzilla Day. Huh. I might just retire there. Godzilla movies are always something special. Sometimes for the weird, but often for the better. The same could be said of most giant monster movies, but this is the king and he looks mad. I don't know what has him so peeved this time, but I can't wait to find out in theaters December 3rd. Monarch Legacy of Monsters. We are in a golden Godzilla era right now. We're getting a new solo movie this year. Next year is a sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong. And now we're getting a whole TV show. And it looks like a lot of monster research is going on. And by research, I mean trying not to get killed. Some of these characters we've seen in the Monsterverse before, but some of them we haven't. And I just have to wonder, are they still around? Maybe everybody dies? I don't know. And I'm not trying to find out yet because I want this show to hit me, surprise me, and I want the reveals to have an impact. It stomps onto Apple TV Plus November 17th. Godzilla has a lot of movies under his belt. Some good, some great, some strange. Here's one of my favorites. See, I really like it when Godzilla fights another monster. Solo movies can be fun and all, but watching giant monsters brawl is a time-honored tradition that's guaranteed to entertain. 
But sometimes, a solo movie will have a clear message that uses Godzilla as a piece of a much larger narrative. And that's what makes Shin Godzilla so special. I think it's the best solo Godzilla film since the original. Sure, it's boring as parts, but it knows what it's trying to do, and it tells a great science fiction story where Godzilla really feels like a destructive force. Disagree? That's fine, but don't worry, cause we get the final trailer for Godzilla Minus One before it hits theaters in the US. I only watched this trailer once because I want to go into this movie as blind as I possibly can so that all the surprises hit me hard. But at the same time, these trailers, this movie, it looks so damn cool. Anyways, shower thoughts. Why is Godzilla's breath blue? Well, originally it didn't have a color cause, you know, black and white. But in the OG King Kong vs Godzilla, they made it blue. Best I can tell because it looked cool, but it's also another color sometimes. Like red for burning Godzilla, or green for Zilla the Redeemer, or purple for the 19th Angel. Is that all of them? I don't know. Some people look at Godzilla movies and think, oh, dude in a suit or CGI monsters. Sounds cheesy. And yeah, it can be cheesy, but it can also be genuinely dramatic. Here's your proof. Godzilla Minus One is in US theaters right now, for a little bit. It's not dubbed, so you'll have to watch it with subtitles, but I promise that if any movie with a giant monster in it can convince you to take it seriously, this is the one. The setting is bleak, the characters feel real, the atmosphere is absorbing, and Godzilla is scary. One of the better Godzilla movies, and definitely one worth it for first-timers. 